Introduction to the Delta Y Transformer Connection, Part 4. In Part 3 of the series, we introduce line currents and phase currents for the Delta Y Transformer Connection. In Part 4, we'll explore the relationship between line current and phase current for the Delta Y Connected Transformer. We understand from Part 3 that primary phase A, B, and C currents flow through the polarity side of the primary windings. And the secondary phase A, B, and C currents flow out of the polarity side of the secondary windings. For a Y-connected transformer, it's very easy to see that phase currents and line currents are both equal. Check out the resources section for more information. However, for the delta connected transformer, we don't have the same one to one relationship between line currents and phase currents. To understand this relationship, let's label a few things to be very clear and very concise. We will call node A1 the node that connects the polarity side of winding A and the non polarity side of winding C. We'll call node B1 the node that connects the polarity side of winding B and the non-polarity side of winding A. And lastly, we'll call node C1 the node that connects the polarity side of winding C and the non-polarity side of winding B. We know that from part 3 that primary phase A currents flow into the polarity side of winding A and out of the non-polarity side of winding A. Which means that the current that flows out of node A1, by definition, is phase A current. And since the non-polarity side of winding A is connected to the polarity side of winding B, the current that goes into node B1 is the same phase A current. This makes visual sense, right? Since we define primary phase A current as the current that flows into the polarity side of winding A and out of the non-polarity side of winding A, the current that comes out of node A1 and the current that goes into node B1 is the same primary phase A current. Let's now move to phase B current. We know from part 3 that primary phase B current must flow into the polarity side of winding B and out of the non-polarity side of winding B. Which means that the current that flows out of node B1 by definition is phase B current. And since the non-polarity side of winding B is connected to the polarity side of winding C, the current that goes into node C1 is the same phase B current. And lastly, let's move on to phase C current. We know from part 3 that phase C current must flow into the polarity side of winding C and out of the non-polarity side of winding C which means that the current that comes out of node C1 by definition is phase C current. And since the non-polarity side of winding C is connected to the polarity side of winding A, the current that goes into node A1 is the same phase C current. Okay, so now that we've illustrated phase currents, let's quickly label our line currents. From part 3, we know that line to line current A will flow through line A into the bushing of winding A and finally into node A1. Similarly, line to line current B will flow through line B into the bushing of winding B and into node B1. And lastly, line to line current C will flow through line C into the bushing of winding C and finally into node C1. Okay, so we know exactly what's going into each node and exactly what's coming out of each node. We are now going to use Kirchhoff's current law on each node to describe the relationship between line currents and phase currents. 
Let's start from node A1. We can visually verify that line current A flows into node A1. Phase current C also flows into node A1. However, phase current A flows out of node A1. So when we apply KCL or Kirchhoff's current law, we can simply express this relationship as line current A plus phase current C equals phase current A. Or in other words, line current A and phase current C goes into node A1, which is why it's on the left side of the equal sign. However, since phase current A flows out of node A1, it's on the right side of the equal sign. Simple, right? The currents that are flowing into node A1 is equal to the currents that are flowing out of node A1. Or simply, line current A plus phase current C is equal to phase current A. Similarly, for node B1, line current B plus phase current A is equal to phase current B. Line current B and phase current A are flowing into node B1, but phase current B is flowing out of node B1. And for node C1, line current C plus phase current B is equal to phase current C. Line current C and phase current B are flowing into node C1, but phase current C is flowing out of node C1. And that, my friends, is how we describe the relationship between line currents and phase currents for the delta transformer connection. We'll continue this relationship and perform phasor analysis in part 5. This module was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power system protection, automation, and controls intuitive.